It's interesting how the demonization of nihilism takes on a sort of dichotomy when it comes to how it's portrayed by different groups. I was listening to a recent video by an online philosophical colleague who will remain nameless. It's important that he remain nameless. Then he makes a couple of statements criticizing nihilism, saying to the effect that it's bad when people engaged in a philosophical discourse tell other human beings that it's okay to be an abusive person because life forms are just a configuration of atoms just molecules bouncing around and so due to this knowledge it's perfectly justified to go ahead and kick a sentient creature because it doesn't matter and that it only matters if it makes you feel good. Then he goes on to imply that this supposed demonstration of nihilism is warranted to the practitioner because to deny an impulse would be to deny your own nature. In other words, he's crafting a characterization that makes it seem as if nihilists are pushing an idea that causing pain and suffering doesn't matter because we can't help what we are. We can't help what we are born as. And to follow our human nature is what's most important. Then the philosopher goes on to call this attitude a form of nihilism because it doesn't value the pain and suffering unnecessarily caused to the other sentience and that we must make an effort to curb our natures and to follow a path that is counterintuitive to our innate tendencies. Well, first off, I'd like to, of course, point out that this characterization of nihilism is a misrepresentation. It's funny how nihilism is all things bad to most people but that the range of this badness is a huge spectrum so wide that the vilifications often contradict each other. Nihilism is so expansively disparaged that even those that disparage it can't even agree on the points of how and why it is bad. Which just goes to show that it is mostly just a patsy for people's need to engage in the blame game. You know, when in doubt, demonize a scapegoat. What Soren Kierkegaard coined as resentiment, a psychological philosophical concept which was later expanded further by Nietzsche as a projection of malcontent onto a target that is blamed for the malcontent. Further defined, Wiki describes it as, quote, one of the forms of resentment or hostility. Resentiment is a sense of hostility directed at that which one identifies as the cause of one's frustration. That is, an assignment of blame for one's frustration. The sense of weakness or inferiority and perhaps jealousy in the face of the cause generates a rejecting justifying value system or morality which attacks or denies the perceived source of one's frustration. This value system is then used as a means of justifying one's own weaknesses by identifying the source of envy as objectively inferior, serving as a defense mechanism that prevents the resentful individual from addressing and overcoming their insecurities and flaws. The ego creates an enemy in order to insulate itself from culpability." Unquote. Yes, this certainly seems to be the case with most people's denigration of nihilism. And in this particular case, the identified cause of the hostility, which is uniformly streamlined under the general umbrella of nihilism, 
but is really just a resentment towards the detachment that is at the root of authentic nihilism. That is a conclusion that a peaceful mind that is not disturbed by sensory perception information is to blame for suffering and evil because a peaceful mind automatically means that the detached person turns a blind eye to wrongdoings and allows evil and suffering to thrive and even enables it through passive disinterest. You know, like the saying goes, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. And this may be a true aphorism, but the implication isn't applicable to nihilism. As detachment doesn't mean that one ceases to be moved by the heart. Or that awareness of illusion makes violations on sentience permissible. One does not need to be amped up on value judgments or be a righteous crusader of hard ethics to recognize and act upon a victimization. Detachment doesn't mean one is disconnected from their instincts and can't recognize evil acts. Intellectual moral relativism may include such a feature, but not for authentic nihilism. For authentic nihilism isn't aimed at getting rid of things through value subtraction. The value subtractions have to do with cutting attachments to illusion, not in annihilating the illusion. This is a common misunderstanding in spiritualism. As we've heard it said on countless occasions, that one must strive to get rid of the ego or that one should seek to meditate and reach enlightenment so that one may get rid of illusion. This is a falsity. No, the aim with nihilism and detachment isn't found in getting rid of ego or illusion. The aim is in cutting our attachments to ego and illusion. If we break down these attachments and embrace the truth of the non-being of the empty self, we know that this true self is a one self, and that all egos are part of the illusion. And as such, there is no difference, division, or separation existing between any awareness. And so an evil act or victimization committed upon another is the same as one being committed upon oneself. Morality should not be based on value judgments, but rather what is found to be inherently true, independent of mind discrimination. We don't need a PhD in ethics or to be staunch devotees of axiology to understand that no creature consents to be imposed upon against its will. We don't even need to be able to think to recognize this as even an animal will recoil and flee an unwanted imposition against it. And so this is exactly why a peaceful monk wouldn't just sit by idly if an evil act was unfolding before him. He would answer the call and act and does so detached with a peaceful mind. Hard to fathom, right? Yeah, I know. We are so used to being up to our nostrils and attachments 
that many of us can't even conceive of a situation that isn't motivated by the flamboyancy of drama whoring or value junkieism. But, believe it or not, it is possible which you will find to be the case if you can ever manage to pull yourself off the teat of desire and stop letting the inner peace of the mind being conditional to sustaining or avoiding certain circumstances. Detachment and negating heavy investments into value, purpose, meaning, and narrative do not compose the road to evil. I would posit that those that commit evil are necessarily invested. That indeed, for one to even seek to victimize another in any way, a delusional state is a prerequisite. And this selfishly indulgent state is hallmarked by stalwart zealotry of value, purpose, meaning, and narrative, or is tied up in paraphilias, the psychopathy of which is still pervasive towards the promotion of gratification via self-interest and greed at the expense of another, which are major investments into delusional outlets, despite seeming to be motivated by a lack of investment. So this is one of the key points that needed to be clarified concerning the false characterization of nihilism as being responsible for committing or ignoring evil. But you know, the irony of the whole situation is that real evil, the psychopaths, nationalistic agents of aggressive force, sociopathic imposers, Greedy oligarchs who believe that all life forms are expendable objects, aka the Sith Lords, have quite a different view on nihilism. The view of nihilism from the point of view of the selfish imperialistic thieves who want to promote their own well-being at your expense and don't give a shit about suffering is... To deny one's own nature is nihilism. To have an attitude that one must curb one's raw desire and strive to tame one's natural state in order to reduce suffering and increase utility is nihilism. Because to seek to tame certain aspects and tendencies of our inherent natural condition is a negation of human nature. It is a self-hatred, a willful self-defacing castration, an emasculation of our innate power, a wish to negate the potency of our own basic qualities of existence in favor of some kind of egalitarian idealism. And what's so ironic about the philosopher's position that I mentioned earlier in the video he thinks nihilism is represented by the cavalier actions of callous practitioners of evil that cause unnecessary suffering, which is justified by a devaluation on the welfare of sentience, and is reinforced by a refusal to resist following the innate brutality of human nature, whereas the actual callous cavalier practitioners of evil believe nihilism is represented by one's denial of the innate brutality of human nature, and, of course, with this view, obviously suffering doesn't matter, and there is no value to the welfare of sentience, as one's own self-interest is held in the highest regard above all else. In other words, as more specifically applied to a man, the feminization of masculinity becomes complete by a man shunning his apparent inherent right to rape, pillage, and murder, or whatever else happens to be present in his nature. 
Hence, the sociopathic personality becomes just another lovely aspect of nature. Can a moral compass even be founded between the conflict of expressing or oppressing natural impulses? Well, it comes down to the simple principles of non-aggression and permission. Express what you will, or repress what you will. As long as whatever it is you are doing or not doing isn't victimizing another sentient creature against its will. The one true self discovering itself makes this truth crystal clear, as these gratifications can only find context within delusion. Hence why both the Sith Lords and the Value Crusaders both set up camp there, which seems to be another contradiction, but it really isn't, for both the light and the dark sides are both equally in delusion. Case in point, our philosopher, who believes nihilism to be one's refusal to negate certain aspects of one's own nature. Whereas the Sith Lords believe nihilism to be one's willingness to negate certain aspects of one's own nature. So wherein lies the truth of nihilism? Is it somewhere in between these two opposite characterizations? No. The essence of our true oneself is beyond a characterization. The fundamental core of non-being is beyond nature. So how could we be of a human nature when we are not even human in the first place? A human is part of the dream. And the true self of non-being is that which is constant, no matter what the dream Expressing or repressing the biological clockwork isn't what nihilism is. Nihilism is detaching from falsehoods. Nihilism is withdrawing from investments in illusion. Nihilism is the negation of all that we are not, so as to discover what we truly are. Pure potentiality.